If there were an Academy Award category Best Producer and or Director of Money-Making Movies, Steven Spielberg would win hands down. Spielberg has either directed and or produced six of the top moneymakers of all time. If there were a category Creator of Blockbusters, who isn't always taken seriously by some in his profession, he'd win that one too. No matter, Steven Spielberg goes on turning out the kinds of films he likes. And if Oscar isn't always impressed... Everybody else is. Raiders of the Lost Ark and its two sequels grossed well over a billion dollars. Jaws made millions as it terrified swimmers all over the world. Close Encounters, Back to the Future, all big box office hits. And of course, there was E.T., the number one box office success of all time. So far, it's taken in $700 million. So you would think Steven Spielberg wouldn't have any doubts about himself or his movies. I have doubts about myself uh, in both worlds. Thinking that you can't pull it off? Yeah. I, I, every movie I, I, I make and every movie I start, I don't think I can pull it off. When you go onto a set mm -hmm. in the morning for a movie, you nervous? Yeah, every morning. Yeah. I, you know, the same feeling I get going to work every morning is the feeling I got going to school every day. Being a bit of an outsider and not being normal and not quite getting good grades and not being able to compete. And I, my tummy is spilkus, my mom would call it. You know, I would have before school every day. And I, I, I feel that when I make movies, too. But you're better at this than you were in school. Oh, damn, damn straight. He may be nervous on the set, but Spielberg's become so important in Hollywood that Lou Wasserman, the chairman of MCA Universal, built this sprawling office complex for him right on the back lot. The $4 million project, which serves as creative home to all of those people who work with Spielberg, was an effort to ensure that Universal would get first dibs on the pictures they turn out. Now, Universal did that for you. You didn't have to put that uh, no, I'm not, not a cent. They built the whole thing for me. And as Lou Wasserman said when I guiltily turned to him and I said, uh, you know, gee, Lou, this is, this is a big deal. How much is this going to cost? He said, don't worry, it's what E.T. made in Uruguay. So, <laughs> so. You want to try that? Although he's a shrewd yeah, businessman, okay. everyone who knows Spielberg says he's still very much like a precocious kid. Yeah. There you go. Even his office is it's filled with right toys, right although they're, for the most part, adult uh, toys. <laughs> this is the kind of place where potentially we could get no work done. <laughs> this grown-up kid has no hesitation telling you okay. he's having more fun now than when he was growing up. Well, I, I, would, I would have probably hesitated if I had like a couple good years. <laughs> and I would have said, well, there was the fourth and fifth grade. <laughs> no. Uh, what about your popularity? Were you a popular kid? No. I was, you know, the last kid to be chosen for the softball team, the last kid to be chosen for the touch football team, the last kid to be chosen for basically everything, including badminton. You know? And then something happened that changed his life. We bought him a little movie camera, and he just started off. But we didn't know he was Steven Spielberg. I mean, this is my little blonde kid with the ears and little bangs. Leah Adler and, uh, is Spielberg's mother. When he was growing up, she encouraged his creativity and was often his cohort. I mean, he'd want to do something harebrained, like go out in the desert and make a movie. How but, old? Oh, eight. I drove an army jeep. We lived in Arizona. And I had a pith helmet and a fatigue outfit. And he'd say, let's go. And I'd keep him home from school. And I used to lie. I, I wrote marvelous notes. I'm very creative. I could always think of a new... <laughs> ailment to keep my kid home from school. So he could make a and movie? And we'd go work out in the desert, and I had just had a ball with him. Hello. Today, Spielberg is revered here at Universal Studios, and although he makes movies for other studios as well, if you take the tour of the back lot, the biggest attractions are from Spielberg movies. There's the shark right there. There's Jaws. Now, why the shark works so well here every day, and I couldn't get the damn thing working for two months in Martha's Vineyard in 74, I'll never know. The shark was scheduled to make many more appearances, according to the strip, and when the shark wasn't ready, or when we tested it and it sunk, uh, what we did was, uh, I just decided to, to shoot without the shark, and, and in a way, I think it increased the... It, it twerked up the suspension of the movie because you really didn't know where it was going to come from next. And, re and rather than not 
seeing the shark ever seen. Instead, I just played a lot of the fear from people in water, mm -hmm. seeing their legs kicking, a point of view of the camera moving, or just mm -hmm. seeing the surface of the water with nothing below. That's what I think turned the movie into a more of an exercise of suspense mm -hmm. than just a horror film. So if you had had the shark when you wanted it, you probably would have had a different movie. I probably would have had a movie that wouldn't have been as successful, I think. Yeah. Spielberg's success goes beyond his movies. <laughs> he helped design the E.T. ride, which has become the biggest attraction on the Universal Tour. You get a little bit of a sauna when you go through this also. It's good for the shin. If you've got some imagination, for those few minutes, you might even think you're on a bike taking E.T. back home. That's my favorite guy right there. That the guy, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Although E.T. was nominated for nine Oscars and actually won four, Spielberg didn't win for Best Director. Does it bother you that you've never won an Oscar as Best Director? Well, it's not that it doesn't bother me. Um, no, I, honestly, I'm not bothered that I haven't won an Oscar because, you know, frankly, there's still time perhaps someday to win one. Maybe the only time I've really felt, felt injured was when I made The Color Purple, we were nominated something like 12 times in every category. And the only ca category the film was nominated in was the category for directing. And that was maybe the one time that I thought that somebody up there doesn't like me. That what, you know, what have I done? Some of your critics have blamed you for contributing to the escalating cost. They say they now have to keep aiming for Spielberg-sized hits. Medium hits won't do. Valid? Well, not, not really. I mean, A, it's not my cross to bear, you know, because I can only make my, my, my movies and little movies, big movies, whatever kind of movies I make, and, and, and I am not responsible for, for their, you know, for, for the acceptance of those films or what happens after those films are released. I mean, everybody goes for a home run if they think they've got a shot at it. Let me get you to react to something that, that one of your Peers said another director, Steven Spielberg can't be compared with people like Mike Nichols or Barry Levinson. There is a place for mass entertainment, but it shouldn't be confused with art or quality award-winning filmmaking. Sometimes I think that statements like that are pretentious in themselves because it, 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 it sort of says that, you know, art is serious and, and art can't be, can't move you. Art can't be on a bicycle with E.T. and fly across the moon, that that can't be art, you know, that because it takes your heart along with it through the sky and it makes you feel like a kid again. The average movie today is $25 million, the average film. I believe about uh, six years ago it was $15 million. I mean, I mean, these, I mean, I mean the multiplication table of what films are going to cost 10 years from now is going to mean that Hollywood will be out of control in that they won't be able to give audiences grand entertainment anymore. And instead, you're going to just have to settle for, for films that are, that are a little, little low in calories. And there's nothing wrong with that, too, because maybe it'll bring back Tracy and Hepburn. Maybe it'll bring back writers like, you know, Ruth Gordon and Carson Kanan. I mean, maybe it'll, it'll, it'll be a revolution and we'll be, the films will be smaller but much more provocative. Can you do that kind of movie? Yes, I can, if I find the right script and story, absolutely. But I'll miss the big show.